Well, what I wrote about was this idea that the A's are putting out there that they are going to ramp up their payroll in Sacramento. And ultimately, when they get to Las Vegas, they plan, or so they say, to have a top tier payroll. Yeah, Ken Rosenthal Hello. at your virtual door. <clears throat> FTC oh, Insider with us right now. Ken, great to see you. you got the whole crew today. Jackson Holiday, happy Jackson Holiday to you. Um, what do you think about the call up and the timing? Scott, I know you were very critical of them demoting him initially. And I had my questions too. It did seem to some degree to be a little bit odd. But basically what they did, in my opinion then, and I still have this opinion, is make the easiest roster decision they could at the time. They wanted to keep both Urias and Mateo. They still have both those guys. They didn't want Jackson Holiday to be on the bench and kind of just have a utility role. So what happens? They don't get much offense out of Westberg, Urias at this point of the season. And they just feel, okay, now's the time. We have a roster spot we can make available with Tony Kemp. And we can now play Jackson Holiday at second base against right-handers, maybe against some lefties too. We've got Urias. We've got Westberg. We can kind of just make it work a little bit better than it was going to work initially because Urias hasn't hit in particular. Neither really is Westberg. So I had no problem with it. And the fact that they did not keep him in the minors past the service time manipulation point when they would have gained in theory, the extra year of control, as long as he wasn't first or second in rookie of the year. That indicates to me that this was on the up and up. We might not agree with it, but my gosh, it's 10 games and he's up after 10 games. I can't have much fault with what they did. Can since you are, you're our insider, our Baltimore insider since the eighties, have you heard, are they going to, are they going to not play him against lefties? Because you, you're, you're seeing comps of like Juan Soto, Mike Trout, Vladimir Guerrero in the minor leagues. You never heard those guys getting called up and being like, well, we're going to sit them against lefties. Is that really something that's been said? Or is that just like a baseball thing that is talked about? Eric, I don't know that they're going to sit him against all lefties. But from time to time, I imagine that, yes, he will get a day off against the left-hander. All players, for the most part, get days off. And they still want to keep Urias and Westberg in the mix. Westberg is also a top prospect. Urias is a guy who has played really well for them for a couple of years now. So it's not a matter of sitting him against lefties necessarily, as just keeping others involved as well. And his performance will dictate his usage probably more than most guys, right? Because you mentioned players like Juan Soto who came up. Bryce Harper was another one. They weren't necessarily sitting against lefties early in their career. If Holiday looks like that kind of player, he's going to play. Ken Astros. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, sorry. Um, he's wearing number seven. How cool was it that it. Cal Ripken and, and Billy Ripken and everybody came out and said, hey, man, like it, this is our dude. I know they haven't used that number since Cal Ripken Sr. And he was there. So this is a pretty awesome moment for not only Holiday, but for the Ripken family and also for the Orioles. I love that, AJ. And that was a really cool thing that Cal tweeted this morning, basically putting any talk to rest that this might be offensive to the Ripken family or anything like that. Now, Cal and Bill both love their dad, like all ch children love their fathers and maybe even a little bit more. They have an affection for their dad and a respect and a love that at least my experience in the game is pretty special. So, I guess the question was fair. We've given Jackson Holiday number seven. That's Rip Senior's number. But as you see in that tweet, Cal put an end to it right away. Our family is thrilled that Jackson Holiday will be wearing dad's number seven. Excited to watch him play. And it is a cool lineage to see Cal Ripken Sr., who was the man who kind of instilled the Orioles' fundamental program. There was a concept called the Oriole Way when he was alive. And he was the coach and later the manager that was the foremost advocate and proponent of that. And now seeing their number one prospect, Jackson Holiday, who is a middle infielder like Cal and Bill were, get to wear that number, that is cool. That's why, in my opinion, guys, baseball is special and different than other sports. We have this kind of thing, this kind of history that gets passed down from generation to generation. 
I, I feel like it just, it brings back memories. You get your first to bat. I remember everything about it. I, th- I swung and threw my bat in the stand. So that's something I'll never forget. That's my first ever <laughs> swing. So hopefully it goes better for him during that time. But I want to change gears here a little bit, talk about the Astros a little bit, the injury woes that they're having. Uh, they're bringing up Spencer Arigetti. Um, nice Irish name, as we could tell right there. Uh, number, he was a top prospect for the Astros. Talk a little bit about him and what the Astros need to do here to uh, keep these pitchers going here a little bit. Well, they originally were thinking that they wouldn't bring him up, but then they decided, you know what, let's do it. And they have a slew of injuries. There's no question about that. They started the season without Verlander, McCullers, Garcia. They have since lost Framber Valdez as well. And clearly right now, their pitching is thin and not just in the rotation their bullpen in the middle innings leading up to abreu and hater and presley abreu presley hater i should say that's problematic as well and all this talk before the season oh my gosh they're gonna have this amazing bullpen you have an amazing bullpen when you've got six or seven guys as certain teams do right now the braves for instance the dodgers to an extent as well you don't have a super bullpen with just three and that's kind of where they are so Arigetti is going to get a chance here, and this is a team that has struggled. They're not hitting really to the extent that we thought they would. They're the Astros. They tend to figure it out, as we know, but it's going to be interesting to see this kid pitch as well against the Royals. Hey, Ken, you mentioned Framber Valdez going down. There's been a slew of elbows lately. We've we've heard about him. We had Dr. Meister on yesterday talking about Tommy John surgeries and elbows and how we can prevent it. What – and then you saw Lindsay Adler's tweet today, or I think it was today, where she talked to the director of pitching for driveline. And his quotes kind of matched up with what everyone's saying. Hey, guys, this is how you get to the big leagues. We're teaching how to get to the big leagues. If you want to stop getting hurt, you got to throw slower and not get max effort. That's not going to change, right? Because people are going to be like, damn, I'm in the minor leagues. I need to get to the big leagues. I'm going to throw this pitch as hard as I can. I'm going to throw the next pitch as much spin as I can. Whatever it takes to get me there. It's not going to change, AJ, but – That quote that Lindsay had in the Wall Street Journal today from the director of driveline pitching bothered me. And it bothered me because what he said was, hey, if we're going to lower their effectiveness, we're going to lower their values, talking about pitchers, and that's not the business we're in. Here is the quote exactly. The ways that you would lower the injury risk are also the ways you'd be lowering the player's value. At the end of the day, that's not the business we're in. Now, Driveline has done a lot of great things for a lot of pitchers and having them in the sport has been a plus for the most part because they've educated pitchers and helped pitchers become better versions of themselves. But in the process of doing that, if you are helping pitchers become better versions of themselves, but ultimately hurting them, that's not a gain. And that's what I wrote in my column a couple of days ago, that this idea that because Everyone wants more velo. Everyone wants more spin. That's how you win. Well, yeah, short term, that's how you win. But are these players winning when they're getting hurt? Are their teams winning when they're losing them? Is the sport winning when we go through this every single year? And this year, it seems with bigger names than usual. No, the sport is not winning. And there has to be a better way. Now, I don't know what that way is. And I don't pretend to know what that way is. But maybe... What the answer is somehow is to shrink the size of a pitching staff and make sure the front offices don't manipulate rules here either and increase the importance of pitching greater length. Maybe not just for starters, maybe for relievers too. And then you wouldn't have such an emphasis on velocity perhaps. You'd be dealing with pitchers who would need to be more craftsmanlike in their approach. Again, I get what the guy is saying. We all get it. And yeah, it's tough to tell an athlete, any athlete, don't be the best version of yourself. But if that best version of yourself is ending up with you getting hurt, I would suggest we need to find another way. Damn, Junior, you're on a rant today. Woo! So for one, you one disagree, topic, AJ? What uh, do you think? One bit. I totally agree. Okay. No, I agree 100 with what you're saying. Let me ask you this then, since you're on on that rant, you're already fired up, and I need this energy this weekend in Houston, okay? Because we're going to throw <laughs> it to it. you maybe once, if I'm lucky, or if you're lucky. <laughs> if I get my wishes, it'll be zero. We'll see Ken maybe pregame, probably not, but, you know, whatever. So, Sacramento, you wrote a long column on Sacramento. 
I mean, this this also kind of got you bubbling a little bit. So I'm just going to let you rant on, Junior. Well, what I wrote about was this idea that the A's are putting out there that they are going to ramp up their payroll in Sacramento. And ultimately, when they get to Las Vegas, they plan, or so they say, to have a top tier payroll, bottom, or I'm sorry, top half of the league. The numbers that I heard and reported were 130 to 150 million dollar payroll in the years leading up to Vegas in Sacramento. And then once they get to Vegas, 170. They're at 60 right now. So I will believe that when I see it, I'm not quite sure how they would get there. And I talked to a few players and I asked, hey, would you want to sign with the Sacramento A's? And most of them had their reservations from the minor league park to the way the team is run to virtually everything. You can overpay free agents. Yeah, you can overpay them. And maybe that's what the A's will have to do. You can even sign some of your younger players to extensions to ramp up payroll in that sense, though it doesn't necessarily do that in the early years. You can do all kinds of things. You can take on bad contracts. None of these things I'm suggesting are particularly wise from a baseball perspective. A baseball perspective, excuse me. So I don't know where they're going with this. And it just seems to me that they have said a lot of things over the years, a lot of things about the way they're going to conduct their search for new ballpark. And now the way they're going to conduct their team and run their team. I want to see it. I want to see it before I believe it. Ken, are you surprised that there hasn't been more of a public statement or response from the league or the players about this situation? As soon as an injury pops up, we have league and players going back and forth, right? The the two sides that love each other. But I didn't see anything after the ace stepped in and had another joke showing from John Fisher not being able to think about any players on his own team and getting excited about Aaron Judge bashing his own team. And since we spoke, Trevor May confirmed that he really does not know the team at all. And Trevor May just played for the team, so I believe him. So anyway, we didn't see anything else, unless I'm missing something, about this move going down. Like, hey, sorry about it from the league's perspective. You're going to be in a minor league park for years. Player on their own team, Ryan Noda, said there's so much fixing to do, and now we're going to give that to the guy who can't you know, tie his shoes. It, it's a problem. Well, we haven't heard much from the union, which has surprised me somewhat, but I am quite certain behind the scenes, the union is going to press the league and the A's to make that ballpark as major league as possible. Now, when you've got clubhouses in the outfield, there's only so much you can do to a certain extent, but I am sure they will improve the facility to the greatest extent they will. And if they don't, then the union will obviously have a strong objection. As Justin Turner noted in what I wrote, he said, in some ways that situation is going to be better than it is in Oakland. You'll have more people in the park. The place maybe won't be as decrepit. These are valid points. So I am sure that behind the scenes, those conversations are taking place. And in talking to some players this weekend and asking some of our athletic writers to talk to some players, a lot of them aren't that familiar with the situation. They're not following it. They don't really care. It doesn't have anything to do with them per se. So that's why I don't think we've had more squawking from the player's side. Now, from ownership side, it has baffled me from day one of this, why the owners and the commissioner have been so accepting of this, so willing to allow John Fisher to do what he is essentially doing here. Not just leaving Oakland, but spending three years in a minor league park and going to a place that is kind of a questionable major league market. 40th largest media market in the country. That would be the smallest in baseball. Now, Vegas is a different kind of place and maybe they'll do great. I have no idea, but it's a risk. Just as staying in Oakland, I guess, in a new ballpark would have been to some degree a risk. But to hear the people in MLB and the people with the A's and other owners tell it, ah, we're good, we're good with this. Well, we'll see how good they are when this thing gets going. <laughs> oh, you're on fire today, Junior. I love it. I love it. Uh, speaking of things on fire, uh, the, the White Sox lately have pulled a lot of adductor muscles. When, when did we uh, start change it from just a groin pull to adductor? Because I don't understand. Like adductor is your groin, and why why do we have to use different terminology? 
I don't know, AJ, and I'm not a physician, so I'm not going to get into this. I don't really know the answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have the full musculature in front of me, the human body, the physique. But I will say this, certainly over the years, we've gotten more advanced in our understanding of the body and more specific in the diagnoses. Doctors have done that. Even trainers have done that. So I think some of the language and some of the terminology comes from that and not it's not really a reflection of anything. Uh, my last question for you is, it's really just bland, real simple. What is one surprise you've seen so far in these first uh, you know, 10, 12 games, good or bad? Like, what have you seen where you're like, okay, well, yeah, I didn't know that was gonna happen or well, I didn't know this was gonna happen. Like, give me, give me a surprise from you that you think right now in baseball, you're like either upset or happy about. What do you think? Pirates. And I want to see more. Obviously, they've played somewhat of a weak schedule. But you know what? Besides the Dodgers and Braves and maybe the Orioles and Yankees, Rangers, there aren't many dominant teams in the game right now. So they've gotten off to a really good start. Their starting pitching has been good. They've played for the most part fairly well. I want to see if they can sustain it. Because last year, if you remember, they started really well. And it didn't end up so well for yeah, them. Yeah, I was going to say that The other thing too. that has surprised me... Todd a little bit and it's so early I'm hesitant to pass any judgments one way or the other and that includes the Pirates the Mariners have not played well the Twins have not played well there have been some other teams too that I've thought wow I thought they would be better than this the Giants I would say I thought they would be a little bit better than they've shown again 10 games you can't really pass judgment mm -hmm. but that's taken me aback a little bit but I would say the Pirates are the biggest surprise and you know what to some degree the Yankees because they are 11-2 and two without Garrett Cole and DJ LeMahieu, and because Anthony Volpe now looks like he's going to be a star and Soto's fit in so well, I wouldn't call them a surprise, but without Cole, I'm not sure that I would have expected it to be this good for them. I like it. Ken, good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate you. We'll catch you. Uh, well, we'll be watching you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So tomorrow is Fair Territory live. Third time. Ken Rosenthal and Alana Rizzo will team up to take your questions. So send them in. Join them during the show if you can to send them in. That is preferred. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.